Hi team, this is the Be Real With Us podcast by The Path to Goals on a mission to help you quit yo-yo dieting forever, eat foods you love, embrace the strength of lifting heavy ass weights and cultivate an undeniable level of confidence that inspires women around you to do the exact same. We are certified nutritionists and personal trainers who just want to be real with you when it comes to nutrition, strength, and mindset. We specialize in behavior change, hormones, metabolism, sleep, stress, recovery, and mindset. If you are frustrated by all the conflicting information floating around on the internet, well, don't worry because we are here to call out the bullshit and help you stop overthinking and start doing. Billions of these humans, humans. spinning on a ball of confusion. confusion. Some kids I went to school with, school with. gave up on their dreams, they said, screw it. Screw I it. said, oh, I'm going to make some music. Even if they tell me it won't do shit. I do it. Damn, I fucking knew it. Knew I'm it. blowing up quick. I said, boom, bitch. I could give a few Hey, tips. be real with us listeners. Fun. Welcome to our podcast today. I am here with Alyssa. It's just us two for today. Hi, guys. Alyssa, how are you doing? Good. It's been... A good week, sort of. I mean, my puppy's recovering right now, but it's looking oh, good. Yeah. It's looking positive. But you our, got him a comfy bed. Got him a brand new orthopedic bed. For those of you who are maybe just tuning in, I have two French bulldogs and I love them to pieces and I wouldn't trade them for the world, but I always caution people when you buy any dog, really, <laughs> any dog comes with a lot of yeah. vets, but especially Frenchies that are literally allergic to air um, and just have... <laughs> All the problems when it comes to breed, like my one of my dogs has a nose job, he has allergies, and he has uh, <laughs> like every spine issue that you can think of, IVD, <laughs> like calcification of his spine, like he's hunchbacked, <laughs> like scoliosis, oh like his genetics just <laughs> did not give him good a good hand. Anyways, uh, we took him for, for blood work yesterday, which was another big bill. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! And, but the, Dude. but it's looking good. Like he's he's still gonna be crated for another four to six weeks. Um, okay, and you got him a comfy bed. Got him a and comfy bed. Not that you guys. He had a comfy bed before, but it was a circle bed, and I wanted it to be orthopedic for his spine Ooh. recovery. <sighs> so yeah, he's oh on the gosh, mend. This is like a very high maintenance child. God, oh my god, he's it's it's a lot. He's, a, he's more expensive than Camila. It sounds he's, like our dogs probably are more expensive than Camila. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for a while, we were feeding them raw, and like I could not continue with that. And they still get the oh, best. I remember that? Yeah, they were expensive. It was their grocery bill was higher than ours. Um, no, yeah, no, it wasn't. They're very well loved. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. But how is newborn life over there? <laughs> newborn life is actually pretty good. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, no complaints over here. I mean, of course, you know, we're still figuring out the sleep schedule. I think we have one down. Uh, his last feeding is usually around nine. And then Kevin takes the first feeding shift with the bottle around 1130. And I take the second one around usually 2.33. Mm -hmm. And Kevin wakes up at 4 a.m. to go to the gym. So that's why I voted for the later, for the second shift, because I, you know, I'm trying to help him stay yeah. as consistent as possible. Teamwork. Um, <laughs> teamwork. Uh, and so, yeah, that has been working out pretty well. I mean, of course, not every night is perfect. There are some nights where he's more fussy mm -hmm. and you know, Kevin gets frustrated because if once he, when he's more fussy with Kevin, nothing's going to happen because the baby just wants me. Yep. So, uh, and then I get all anxious because Kevin's getting frustrated and I'm like, just give me the baby. <laughs> Go to sleep. I'm so familiar. Uh, so normal. Yeah. Camila wanted nothing to do with Fernando. And it was fr it's yeah. frustrating as the mom, because he was like, you want a break and the baby doesn't yeah. want your partner. And they're sad because yeah. they love the baby and they want to be with the baby. Yeah. So it's yeah. both, everyone's Kevin, frustrated. Yeah. Kevin was frustrated because he just wanted me to get rest, mm -hmm. which I thought was really nice. But I, I don't, I honestly don't mind. Um, I'm still in recovery, postpartum recovery. So it's not like I have like a hard training session the next day or mm -hmm. anything like that. So I'm, I'm really interested to see how all of this is going to work out once I start adding training back into the mm -hmm. mix. Because I need a now, squat I mean, tomorrow. You go to bed. 
<laughs> I know, right? That's going to be me. <laughs> because as of now, I think it's very manageable. Yeah. I, I feel like I'm getting, I mean, you know, like ranging from like five to six hours of sleep, not terrible, mm-hmm. but my quality of sleep is, has always been fantastic. Mm-hmm. So I feel rested Good. when I wake up the next day. I don't, even though it's broken up sleep, I don't feel like I'm sleep deprived. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, I'm, I'm just walking right now. So I'm not utilizing a whole lot of energy with lifting. Mm-hmm. So I think it's a lot more manageable right now, but I could definitely see it's, it's so fascinating how the body really prepares you for all of this stuff. Um, leading up to the first couple weeks before birth, how your body is like, you know, with like the soreness and like, you know, uh, less energy. It's just really preparing you and basically forcing you to slow down Mm -hmm. and then you give birth. And then that whole recovery process, I mean, it all just makes sense to like, again, continue to slow down, take time with your baby, you know, don't worry about trying to get back to your body weight or to get back in the swing of things so quickly. So as much as I miss lifting, I am enjoying this quality time with the baby and Kevin, you know, <laughs> and Kevin, all of to course. yourself <laughs> I know. for three all months. Yeah. Yeah. It's really nice. Aww. You know, it's nice not having him working and yeah. I'm sure he's kind of itching to go back to you work. Think so? Do you think like, he's itching? I think he misses work. Yeah. He loves his career. Yeah. And, you know, I, I keep saying like, oh my God, stay at home. Dad looks so good yeah. on you. You like, know, you know like, the business no. is doing well. I yeah. mean, <laughs> would you want to retire sooner? No, he said no. <laughs> You've already talked about it. I've, trust me, I've talked to him about it multiple times. If, and if I like, propose no. this to Fernando, he'd be like, down, in. Yeah. <laughs> in. Up. Oh my God. He does not I want wish. to work. He loves his job. He loves it, but... He just wants to, he's a homebody man. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I could, I I see that. Oh gosh. Oh, But yeah, no, not Kevin. He needs adventure in his daily life. And so, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, newborn, newborn stage is, is fun and he's getting chunkier by the day. He's eating a lot. So I'm happy. Yeah. (laughs) He's so stinking cute. You guys, if you haven't seen him already, she posted him on her Instagram to go check him out. He's so cute. I know. Of course, everybody, every parent thinks their baby is the cutest. And yeah, they just get cuter. No, they get cuter too. Like every day they get so much cuter. Like you just love them. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Yeah. And I know you, you mentioned that you weren't like a huge fan of the newborn, newborn phase. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No. Yeah. I, I, hundred percent, even though toddlerhood is wild (laughs) Yeah. and comes with its challenges a hundred percent. They're just so freaking cute. They have their crazy moments, but the cuteness factor, the talking, the cuddling, the I love yous, the cute personality, things, the, personality, the, the yeah. riding the bike and doing things and like getting into stuff with it, that is like the fun. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited. I'm really excited mm-hmm. about that. I'm curious how his personality is going to be, who he's going to be more like, how he's going to speak yeah. and how, you know, watching him learn. I'm really looking forward to all that stuff. Yeah. I do have to say though, I love I love him being a newborn. Yeah. He is just, he's just so like I don't know, like <laughs> just so cute. I'm obsessed. <laughs> yeah, I could stare at him. I could stare at him all day. Aww. Like he's just sleeping and I just wanted to like look at him the whole time. <laughs> Kevin's like, how would you like it if somebody's just hovering over you, staring at you while you're sleeping? I'm like, listen, he doesn't know that I'm staring at him. No idea. Oh, yeah, do he has it. no idea. So cute. Yeah, so cute. It. Yeah. <sighs> What's up, Be Real with us listeners? We want to take a minute to talk to you about our Elite 360 Transformation Program with you. Our one-on-one programming focuses on three main pillars to help you achieve athletic results. Number one, optimal nutrition. Building an impressive physique requires you to fuel your body by consistently consuming the right portions of macronutrients, your carbohydrates, proteins, and fats, micronutrients, vitamins and minerals, and hydration to meet each individual needs for optimal performance, recovery, and sustained vitality. Two, strength training. Did you know women lose 1% of muscle mass per year after 30? This decline significantly raises the risk of chronic health issues as we age. So if we're not proactively building and maintaining muscle, we're losing it. We teach our clients how to properly build muscle and strength through our strength training program. So they become more resilient and confident during all stages of their life. 
And number three, the most important part, behavior change. A true athlete recognizes the key to mastering their craft lies in seeking guidance and feedback from a trusted coach. They inherently grasp the importance of continuous learning and maintain a growth mindset throughout every step of their journey. Our team specializes in behavior science where we implement evidence-based techniques to help you cultivate the lifestyle habits and mindset of a true athlete. So if you're interested in learning how to become an athlete of your own life. Click the application link in the show notes to apply and we can't wait to hear from you. All right, guys. Well, it is still the beginning of January and we want to talk about the seven things that you can do to make weight loss suck a little less. And I might have added um, a few more. I might have a few more to add. So it might be eight. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All good. Yeah. The more, the better. Yeah. We really want, you know, um, obviously because motivation is so high in the beginning of the year and people or some people might go into panic mode because they overindulge during the holidays. Um, we really want to help you guys avoid falling into the fad diet obsession of trying like juice cleanses and keto and intermittent fasting and all of these things that pretty much guarantee those quick results in the beginning, but aren't really sustainable long-term. And so when you are choosing a sustainable dieting approach, there are still some factors that you should consider with with implementing this. And so we have seven to eight tips for you guys that we want to go over. Um, but first I want to mention that dieting itself, you have to remember it's basically a controlled starvation. Uh, you are going to be hungry. Mm -hmm. It's part of being in a deficit, but obviously there are ways to help avoid feeling like you're starving and avoid, um, overeating later, right? Because that's something common that happens. Uh, you know, we're eating in a really low calorie deficit for a long period of time, and then that will lead to binging later. And then you're just kind of stuck in this yo-yo dieting cycle. We don't want to do that. I feel like too, people are like, so hush hush with, um, like you might be hungry when you diet. <gasps> like yeah. it's a secret, like you don't <laughs> hear a lot of fitness influencers talking about, yeah, you're doing a controlled star form of survey in a way, like you're eating less yeah. than you were, you might feel a little hungry. Like it's, yeah. and guess what? And that's you won't okay. die. I promise. Yeah. You won't die. It's all like, good. It's the mindset I think is a big one, which I think we can maybe add in at the totally. end. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There's the behavioral component and then there's the mindset and you also have to keep in consideration your biofeedback markers as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, ma'am, do we have that in there? I don't think we, we have don't. That in I, know that. Oh, no, I know. Oh, I know. We wrote, like, we wrote a list of seven, <laughs> more things, but there might be yeah. some like there might be like bonus things that we throw yeah. in. Because as I was coming yeah. to this, I was like, oh, there's probably more than seven, but we'll just stick with seven and then just kind of yeah, like, definitely we'll freestyle in there. We're in a freestyle. Too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> go off the notes. <laughs> what? No. Oh my god, it's scary. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so number one, uh, this is something that I see all the time: slashing calories calories, um, slashing calories for some reason, like 1200 is like this magic number that people always like to hover around. <laughs> it's like, okay, well, I don't know how much calories I'm actually eating per day. Cause I don't track my food. So I'm just going to cut down all the way down to 1200 calories because that sounds like a good range or I heard it somewhere or, you know, on a Facebook group or whatnot and, or a calorie calculator, who knows? And obviously that leads to a lot of problems. But first, I want to emphasize something when it comes to weight loss. Um, this is something that I actually heard um, from Lane Norton mm -hmm. uh, on the Joe Rogan podcast. He just recently uh, reposted hit a short reel from this. And so th these are not statistics that um, I made, not made up, but like looked into. It was just from this reel. Um, but I mean, we all know that we don't have a weight loss problem, right? Um, we have a weight regain problem. That is the largest issue. And what Lane was talking about was, you know, six to seven people are actually able to lose a, a significant amount of weight. Um, we're talking about people who um, are obviously obese or 
um, very much overweight and, you know, anybody can lose weight. And I've said this in the past, like weight loss is easy in a lot of ways because you just need to be in a calorie deficit and how you go about that. Anybody can do right. Well, the weight regain is the biggest issue. So within one year, 70% of people will put it back on in two years. 85% of people will put it back on. And then within three years, about 95% Mm. of people will put it back on. That's almost 100% of people who start dieting will put it back on three years later. That is insane. Um, And so with that being said, we really need to take a look at, okay, well, the diets that people are picking are just not sustainable. And so if you really want to make this a long-term thing and not just lose the weight, but keep it off forever, the key word there is forever, you have to pick a diet that you actually want to continue after the weight loss is over. You have to remember that there is life after you reach your goals. And if you cannot imagine yourself continuing the lifestyle or eating the foods that you are eating during your fat loss cycle, then it probably is not the right diet for you. And I think a lot of um, people have a hard time wrapping their head around, you know, the concept of flexible dieting and macro-based nutrition and, you know, uh, incorporating all of their favorite foods. They just don't know how to apply that. Uh, And so, you know, um, obviously there comes with like, the psychological aspects and your learning history when it comes to diets and food and your relationship with food, right? All of those things have an impact as well. Um, but when it comes to the uh, impacts uh, on slashing your calories all the way down to you know 1,200 calories or whatnot, um, obviously, you know, weight loss is affected. So if calorie intake is consistently lower than the body's energy expense energy expenditure weight loss is going to happen, right? That's how weight loss happens. Um, but if the extreme calorie restriction is too low, then, um, it's going to lead to unsustainable, uh, weight loss, and then it's going to negatively affect your metabolism. So what does this mean? Well, your metabolic rate is going to change. So your metabolism can actually slow down because your body adapts to conserve energy. And so, Um, when you are eating 1200 calories and you're doing a bunch of, um, exercise, uh, whether that is hit or, um, running or cardio, your body is an adaptive machine. It's going to adapt to that specific lifestyle. And so at a certain point you have to ask yourself, well, let me take a step back. You're going to hit plateau much sooner than somebody who is losing weight at a sustainable rate. You're going to hit it much sooner. And then at that point, what exactly are you supposed to do? How much more calories are you supposed to cut? How much more cardio are you supposed to add in? Eventually, it's going to become too hard to maintain for longer than you know a few weeks after that. And then we fall into this yo-yo effect where we start to regain the weight pretty quickly after that when you actually just return to regular eating because what you were doing before, you're starving, you're hungry. (laughs) Uh, Life is no fun. You want to go back to doing normal things, right? And so if this sounds like you, where you take drastic measures in cutting your calories and doing a bunch of cardio, and then you return back to like what you were doing before, uh, it's probably not going to be the best. Also, don't get it twisted. What she's not saying is, 1200 calories and or a thousand calories or 800 calories you're, I swear I'm doing it and you're not losing weight you guys like if you <laughs> truly mean. are eating extreme low calories and moving your body for weeks on end without any binges um and you're not losing weight like there's something wrong with the track like if you if you like yeah. you see what I'm saying like you can't <laughs> do these things and not starve like they've there's been multiple like the starvation study right um like you eventually will be losing so much weight that you're sickly you have uh, uh, nutrient deficiencies uh your hormones get affected you have muscle loss all of that but um at some point like go ahead i was gonna say your body is basically fighting for survival right and when 
your hormones, you start to create, um, have hormone imbalances, mm -hmm. autoimmune disorders, right? Those are a reaction to your body responding to your lifestyle choices. And so it's responding that way as it's basically shutting down to preserve as much energy as possible. Uh, it's a way of, of protecting itself, really. Mm -hmm. And I know that sounds crazy because why would I have an autoimmune disorder or why would I have hormone imbalances as a way for my body to protect itself? Well, you're thrashing it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're thrashing it, right? It needs to do something to help you slow down. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's definitely not a place where you want to be at. And then, you know, most likely when you're slashing your calories down that low, you're not eating quality nutrition. Um, it's mostly like salads and mm -hmm. like, I mean, it could be some quality nutrition because most people will just eat super clean. Um, but, uh, it, I mean, the nutrition itself is, is not the only factor. We also have to take into consideration our emotional health, our psychological health, our, um, our social health, right? Uh, so if those other areas of your life are not improved or at least maintained during your fat loss cycle, then it ain't worth it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it ain't worth it. Um, muscle loss as well. That is a huge piece uh, two, when you're in a caloric deficit, I've talked about this before, but you're not just losing weight. You're not just losing body fat, but you're also losing muscle. And so if you're not eating enough protein and you're in a caloric deficit for a long period of time and you're not lifting weights, you will be losing muscle mass. And then we fall into like that skinny fat, uh, skinny fat, uh, body composition that we don't want. Um, so we're just kind of losing weight and we're losing muscle mass and we're getting weaker. We don't want that because when we have less muscle mass, then that can lead to some metabolic deficiencies and nutritional deficiencies, I should say. Um, we can feel fatigued and irritable, uh, emotional eating as well. So one thing that, you know, a common you know problem that we see as well is, you know, emotional eating can have a huge impact on your ability to stay consistent. And so if you go into severe calorie restriction and you don't have your habits managed around emotional eating, it's just going to exacerbate in, in that calorie restriction. So um, strongly recommend that you focus on improving your relationship with food and um, work on managing your emotions around food and replacing those with, you know, something that is a little bit healthier, right? Usually emotional eating is just a response to something else that our body is telling us that we need. Not necessarily that we need food. We just go to food because it's easy. We know it's going to taste good every single time and it's comforting, right? Uh, but a lot of times it could be because we need connection. We need alone time. We need to recharge our batteries. Um, we need you know, uh, to go outdoors, to get in the sun a little bit, right? Uh, and so really uh, becoming aware and in tune with what your body actually needs to support that. I don't know if you want to add anything to that, Alyssa. No, you, I mean, you nailed it there. Um, that's okay. a big one. We have a lot of clients that deal with emotional eating. Um, and mm -hmm. it's because they're, um, the rest of their life isn't aligned with their values, their goals. Um, they don't know how to manage their sleep and their stress. And so that is a big one that's missed oftentimes. Yes, that's huge. Sleep and stress for sure. And then quality of life, right? I think you, you know, hit a good point there. Do you like your life? <laughs> <laughs> like that's important. <laughs> you're, you know, you're not going to find meaning and purpose in literally everything that you do, mm -hmm. but you know, if you are not satisfied at work, then and okay, if you're not satisfied at work, and it's not possible to switch careers or it's going to take a long time to do that or you can't get out of that situation, how can you make your life better outside of work? That's going to improve your quality of life so much more. I mean, that's what I did for a really long time. You know, I knew that I didn't want to work in the previous job that I was working at, but man, was I excited to get off and work on some other things that I felt passionate about and excited yeah. And that really helped me get through those really hard days that I didn't want to be working. <laughs> totally. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. So I'm going to go along with number two. Now this one, adequate and consistent feedings of protein and fiber. 
I wanted to put adequate and consistent because it's like, oh, but I had a protein shake and a high protein <laughs> breakfast. Okay, good. Are they adequate? Like, are you getting at least, you know, everyone's going to be different, but let's just say 30 is a good number generally for most women to shoot for. 30 grams per meal and snack. Are you getting it consistently? Um, so focusing on quality protein and fibrous foods. So think of voluminous fruits and veggies, which I'm going to talk about. But for protein, the major reason, well, there's a lot of reasons for protein, but um, when it comes to fat loss, right, you're in a fat loss phase right now. Most of us are. It's January. Most people like to align their phases of fat loss in January. Um, protein keeps you fuller longer, keeps you full and satisfied. It's going to reduce cravings. And that's going to help you with all over your overall calorie intake. You know how many clients have come to me after they've increased their protein and go, wow, I'm not craving things as much. I'm like, yeah, if you're, you're eating balanced food plates uh, that include protein. That's a big one. Um, yeah. A little fun fact here, the thermic effect of food, I'm not going to go too in depth in this one, but digesting protein, you actually burn more calories than you would carbs or fat. Um, it's just through the process of the thermic effect of food. When you eat protein sources, you, your body has to work a little bit harder to burn. Now it's just a little, it's, it's, it's yeah. Out of hundred calorie, like 30% yes. of the calories consumed by protein specifically yes. are burned. Yes, but you're right. through I, fats and carbohydrates are usually around like zero to three. Th th yes. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. So <laughs> she's right. hundred percent. Um, okay. So that's a little fun fact. So extra bonus, eat more protein, burn a little bit more calories. Um, mm -hmm. and then consuming enough protein is going to help you preserve muscle mass, which we know increases metabolism. We've talked about this. She just touched on it. And then also in past podcasts, so I won't spend too much time there. Um, and then fiber. So foods that have fiber, like raspberries, pears, um, think of a, like leafy green vegetables, but sweet potatoes, right? Those are all foods high in fiber. What an oatmeal, my favorite, eat it every day, right? When you digest fiber, it goes through your small intestine. It actually travels to your large intestine where uh, it absorbs water and it gets into like a gel consistency. This slows down the digestion of other foods and gives your body more time to absorb that nutrients. And it helps with that I'm full signal. So if you eat a big bowl of oatmeal with some peanut butter, right? And some protein, you're gonna feel super full and satisfied versus just eating uh, like a piece of toast, right? Um, because fiber, ha or sorry, because oatmeal has um, adequate fiber. So again, raspberries are great to add to Greek yogurt, right? So you're getting fiber and protein. My, my hack is whenever you're making a meal, it's protein, fat, fiber, right? You want those three, protein, fat, and fiber. So again, instead of just eating a small bowl of Greek yogurt, add some raspberries, add a little bit of chia seeds on top. Um, black beans are another good one. Add that to your burrito, your, your turkey burrito. Broccoli, I love adding this to pasta and chicken, right? So you're getting some bulk added to your food. Uh, instead of just eating a big bowl of pasta, which will probably leave you a little hungry, right? In a few hours, like in an hour, add broccoli and chicken, right? So there is your protein and fiber. Quinoa is another good one. They're all packed with fiber. So super simple. So super simple. simple. I think people, I think people overcomplicate yes. it because they think of dieting and then they think of like bodybuilder food where mm -hmm. they have to eat like a cup of broccoli and then uh, like five ounces of chicken breast and like a couple slices of sweet potato. <laughs> it's like, you could do that a couple times, but, um, try mixing and pairing these foods together. Just like Alyssa said, mm -hmm. like if you make some broccoli, shred it up a little bit, mm -hmm. put it in some pasta, it's going to taste really good. I mean, you're probably not even going to taste You don't even taste it. Really the good. last <laughs> night, what I did is uh, I never grabbed frozen spinach, but Fern grabbed two few bags of frozen spinach. I'm like, Oh, haven't worked with this in a while. Uh, we decided on pasta and ground beef and I tossed the frozen spinach in there with the ground beef. You barely taste it. It's adding yeah. volume to your plate, tons of vitamins and minerals. Yeah. Um, and you guess what? Your kids hardly know. Well, maybe certain kids are weird about fit food being mixed in, but my yeah. toddler, my toddler is great with veggies. So I, I don't want to brag, but, um, it's all <laughs> mixed in there. It's not separated. So she's loving right. the pasta and it's little bits of spinach are within the pasta and the beef. And she hardly yeah. notices it. 
And you guys, when you pair a food that is non-preferred or less preferred Mm -hmm. with something that you already really love, you're more likely to eat more of it consistently over time, especially if you don't taste it. Yeah. Throw it in a smoothie. (laughs) You won't even notice. Throw it in a smoothie, throw some sauce over it. If you want, you know, some uh, marinara sauce Mm -hmm. in your pasta, maybe some meatballs, make some protein in there. You can really spice things up. And again, you don't have to overcomplicate this stuff. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be boring bodybuilder food Mm -hmm. that you dread uh, every, you know, every week that you meal prep. Um, I've even seen you uh, create that similar recipe with salmon too. And so, yeah. Yes. Um, some like meal prep tips there. You got, you guys. Volume feeding, vo- volume food eating in a deficit is going to be a lifesaver, okay? Because mm-hmm. you're going to be, again, might be a little bit hungry. This is how you combat that. Foods like mm-hmm. watermelon, again, leafy greens, broccoli, zucchini, cucumber, bell peppers, low in calorie. They're cal- low in calorie density, meaning they're packed in a lot of, think if you picture your dinner plate, lots of volume on your plate for fewer calories. Versus a calorie dense food, on the other hand, is lots of calories in a small space. So think of sticker bar, right? It's like 200 calories for this big. Um, nothing against sticker bars. They're delicious. I eat them. But it's just, you have to think, like, if you're thinking of your budget, I like to think of calories like your budget, right? Like a bank account. Mm-hmm. You have to spend it wisely when you're in a deficit. And again, we keep saying a calorie deficit this is not supposed to be how you live your life. This is for six to eight weeks as a, like a side note here. Ooh, six to eight weeks. Right? I, I, yeah. I mean, I, it just depends on the person. Or, or but a little bit longer. Yeah, six, eight weeks, 12 sure. weeks. Yeah. Like you're not supposed to be dieting the entire year. Yes. <laughs> Depending on the person, yeah. maybe six weeks to 12 weeks uh, for a fat loss mm-hmm. cycle. Um, so here's an, another note here because we, oh, we're going to get the holistic people coming after us. They, they, <laughs> I, a lot of people are just like, Oh my God, volume meeting. Like I've seen, because I follow, I love following different types of content, people that post. Mm-hmm. And so you'll get the more holistic people that are really big into like emotional eating and, um, re- recouping your relationship with food that maybe people that have done bikini shows and are like now like, Oh my God, mm-hmm. I can't look at broccoli without thinking that it, like my mental health, you know what I mean? So like, okay, now not, this is what we're saying. Not trying to solely focus on low calorie high foods all of the time. Right. And this is right. why I'm saying diet should be, you know, short term. Um, because if you just constantly try to volume me, I'm not telling you to switch your pasta for spaghetti. Was that spaghetti squash? Or protein pasta. Yes. Oh yeah. Spaghetti squash spaghetti pasta. Spaghetti squash. Yeah. Remember that was like a thing, like no carbs, like switch yeah. all your carbs out for veggies. Like that's what we're saying. We're saying is you can add maybe some cauliflower rice into your white rice or next to your white rice to right. bulk it up. Right. So here's, here's the thing about dieting, you guys, uh, you have to, First of all, you have to be hyper aware on where you're at mentally Mm -hmm. with your relationship with food, with your relationship with your body, with um, just the process of dieting itself, right? And you have to understand that all the things that we're talking about today are strategies Mm -hmm. to help you stay consistent with this specific goal. It is not, like Alyssa said, is not something that we encourage or expect people to do forever. These are just tips and tricks to help you get through those days that you're going to, you're going to feel freaking hungry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Especially toward the end, those last few weeks, you're probably going to feel more hungry than you've ever felt before. And that's normal, right? But there are strategies to help you get through those times, um, that make dieting suck a little less, which is why we called this episode that. Yes. So, (laughs) So and I have like another little bonus tip that I didn't want to make its own, um, number category. Yes. Category. But I see this time and time again with clients. Um, so as I was saying for focusing on protein, fat and fiber, but you got to watch your fat too. (laughs) And this is again, an argument here with like nutritional purists is like low fat versions, like of low fat salad dressings, pasta sauces, dairy products, things like that. It's like unnatural and like you know, oh, yeah, it's the like chemicals. the chemicals, the, oh chemicals. God, the chemicals. Okay. The oh, sugar alcohol. Oh, ultimately the choice is yours. Right. And you want to do what works for you. But if you can swing splurging for these full fat 
items like Caesar dressing, you guys, have you guys seen the, anyways, <laughs> the, the fat content in Caesar dressing, delicious. But if you're trying to uh, lean out, doing a full fat Caesar dressing, you're going to sacrifice some massive fat uh, grams coming from there. Yeah, And it's just, again, calorie saving products like that are your allies when you're in a cut. Um, and mm-hmm. wall full fat, like, trust me, I love me some five, five percent full fat Greek <laughs> yogurt. I, I do it from time to time. I will rotate between the zero to five. They full fat products are more filling again, protein, fat, fiber fills you up. But when you're in a calorie deficit, you have to make a decision. Calories are calories. You have to be yeah. in a deficit to lose weight. That is just plain mm-hmm. and simple. And so if you decide, if you prefer f- higher fats, go ahead, but you got to get, you have to cut those calories from somewhere. So it's got to come from carbs and we don't want to risk your protein. So I just wanted to add that in as like a little bonus tip is like, watch your fat calories and how you're spending them. Yeah. And the thing about dieting is most of your foods should not change from when you're not dieting. Mm -hmm. I think people will have a misconception about that. It's more so the portions Mm -hmm. and like Alyssa said the ingredients. So right now, because I'm not dieting, I have a uh, regular syrup with my pancakes mm-hmm. and that obviously adds a shit ton of carbs too, because of pancakes, carbs, and then you put regular syrup, like maple syrup yep. It's yep. Like, and then fruit and then pe- peanut butter, right? It's like all the, all the calories, like a six to 700 calorie meal. When I'm, when I'm dieting, I would probably, you know, switch some things a little bit, you know, maybe instead of three or four pancakes, I'm just going to have two. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to have a zero calorie syrup. And then I'm probably going to skip out on the fruit and just have, you know, peanut butter. Right. And Mm -hmm. so those are the minor changes that you're going to be making, not because syrup is bad, but because you're, you have goals and you're trying to maintain that caloric deficit. And so these food choices are better for your specific goal at this specific time. Amen. Right now I'm pregnant. And so I am also choosing full uh, fat options, like the FIA 5%. And just like Shantae said, I'm going to go for the real syrup right now. (laughs) So yes. Okay. Number, I guess (laughs) 3.5. So you're neat. You're non-exercise activity thermogenesis. You don't need to be a marathon runner to lose weight. In fact, um, you can just increase your activity throughout the day. So that's what that means. Non-exercise activity um, thermogenesis is just basically not unstructured exercise, unstructured activities. Uh, so when you're working, when you're cleaning, when you're running around taking care of the kids, all of these calories uh, contribute to your total daily energy expenditure. Um, and so, um, you don't have to continuously add more cardio. In fact, here's a fun fact. You don't have to do cardio at all. (laughs) You I know it's crazy. When I first learned about this, I stopped doing cardio completely. I'm like, well, it's like when I found out about flexible dieting, I stopped eating vegetables for like two years. Um, same thing happened, same thing happened with cardio. Uh, in fact, in one of my, um, pretty intense fat loss cycles, when I was working with a bodybuilding coach, um, I didn't do cardio at all during that time with her. I just increased my steps over time and I was the most shredded I've ever been in my life. So I did not pick up my feet faster than they needed to, to be. Uh, I just woke up earlier every single, you know, cycle and just walked more. Uh, and so cleaning more, walking more, uh, doing more things around the house, uh, this can definitely contribute to your caloric deficit. And you have to remember too, like I mentioned in the beginning, our bodies are an adaptive machine. It's going to adapt to the physical activity that you're doing. And so if you're doing a ton of cardio, especially in the beginning, your body's going to adapt to that. And you don't want to completely gas yourself out too soon. So increasing your steps is the easiest, most convenient, most sustainable way for you to experience weight loss uh, consistently uh, and sustainably. And then maybe at the end, you know, this is kind of what I like to do and with clients as well, maybe in the last four, four weeks of your deficit, then you can ramp things up a little bit, add a little bit more intense cardio. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can start running, start running those last four weeks, maybe add some hit cardio, Mm -hmm. right? Cardio should be 
used as like a tool, a temporary mm-hmm. tool to help you. I'm, I'm talking aside from cardiovascular health. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, hold on. Uh, uh, start from <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <Short taste then. laughs> right. Cardio should be used as a temporary tool to help you, you know, get to your weight loss goals. It should not be like the primary factor because like I said, your body's going to adapt to it. You're going to get used to it. You have to add more. And it's like, okay, how, how far are you going to go with this? Um, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. No, just amen. <laughs> like, oh, okay. Yeah. I, amen. I, I, amen. I'm definitely not a, a, I don't prefer running. I'm definitely a walker. So once yes. I found out that I can get Same. lean as hell without having to run, yog. I, I do want to get into running though. How many times have I said this? Okay, you guys need to hold me accountable because every, every single year, you know, I bought the shoes, I bought the you know, I bought all the gear, you know, all the things that you're not supposed to do when you say you're going to do goals, like you buy all of the gear and then you never do anything with it. See, we're just like you. <laughs> yeah, we're just like you. We do the same shit that we tell you not to do. Um, I have treadmill in my garage and I just use it for walking. I've ran on it maybe like three times and I have this cool like little like vest thing that you could put your phone in. It's specifically for running. So you don't have to hold your phone. You just put it, put mm. your phone right in front of your vest. Uh, I got that specifically because I, one summer I was planning on running and that lasted about two weeks and then I stopped. Do you really uh, want to run though? Do you really like No, you I like do. It? Okay. I don't love it. No, I don't <laughs> like it. <laughs> but I want to be more conditioned. Okay. I want to be more athletic. Uh, I don't just want to be like a walking block of muscle. Okay. <laughs> Kevin got ma- it. Kevin, Kevin makes fun of my running. He says, you run like a bodybuilder. He's a, fanta- <laughs> he, he's a fantastic runner. He's very athletic. He, he's a football player. And, you know, when we go running together, he never, he just like smokes me. Like he doesn't even wait for me. He just <laughs> runs. And I'm like crawling behind him, you know, screaming at him, wait for me, wait, slow down, <laughs> slow down. Well, um, okay, hold on. Well, maybe you don't want to be a long distance runner. You said more athletic no, or conditioned. I don't, I don't want to be but maybe yeah, like, recognition. maybe that just looks like more plyometrics, more like yeah, yeah, conditioning in yeah, general. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, I don't want to be a long distance runner. Yeah. I don't think, yeah, I'm not interested in that. I mean, I'm interested to do like a, you know, 5k, Okay, maybe work up to 10k. I, I don't know. Am I trying to unpack? Uh, but didn't you, <laughs> with you, like, I know. What do you really but want? Then, <laughs> I know. What do I really want? I don't even know what I want. Um, Denise though, obviously inspires me. She's yes. such a fantastic girl. Every time she posts on her stories, like her form, her running form is so freaking good and she makes it look fun. Yeah, she I'm makes like, it look so fun. Fu- yeah. She makes it look fun, even though every time I do it, it's not fun, no. <laughs> but yeah. So she's obviously inspired me and yeah, we'll see any runners out there. Feel free to, you know, check in on me <laughs> to see if I'm actually doing this later on this year. Dr. Maddie says wait till at least 12 weeks to run. So Okay, that's good to know. <laughs> All right. Noted, noted. <laughs> Tip okay, number on. four, diet beverages, drink your freaking water and say no to alcohol and ca- high calorie drink. Put down the coffee, the Starbucks <laughs> coffee with sugar in it, okay? Yeah. So we're talking about all thing beverages. So proper hydration really is, you guys, essential. Like I think this is a one that's like such a basic habit that people are like, meh, they poo-poo it and they're like, yeah. Fuck water. <laughs> Who needs water? <laughs> Who needs water? But you guys, optimal body function relies on you being hydrated. Um, it's going to help with nutrition, nutrient absorption, digestion. It's going to help with waste removal, all of the things. So you guys, please stay hydrated. Um, and no, you don't have to drink a gallon of water. I know it's like new year, new me, gallon of water, 10,000 steps. Okay. Let's just do a little bit better. Like if you're drinking 20 ounces, let's shoot for 30 to 40 ounces. Um, I don't know how people can drink a gallon. Uh, yeah. Every, no, I haven't like, drank a gallon no. since my bodybuilding days. No. Like those. Like, yeah. You Back when it was like, you had like your yeah. coach told you to. Yeah. Like <laughs> you guys, if you're not, you, you don't need a gallon right now. I'm just saying like, just start small. Anyway, staying hydrated. It's going to help performance in the gym. Um, and really help maximize your workout results. Um, and this is the other thing when it comes to weight cuts, right? If you're in a di- on a diet, your body can misinterpret thirst as hunger. So again, mm. if you're trying to lose weight, be hydrated. Um, have that water and bottle. And sleep. Yes. And sleep. And, 
<laughs> that's like, it's like, yeah. <laughs> all the things. Um, this one has saved. Well, I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, True. like when you're sleep deprived, that can exacerbate cravings as well. True. And it just reminded me, like, so if you're not getting enough sleep, if you're not drinking enough water, and you have these massive sugar cravings, or what some people yes. like to call a sweet tooth, I just oh. have an uncontrollable sweet oh. tooth. Like, no, you just need more sleep. Yeah. And you need to drink more water, yes. and then your sweet tooth will magically be managed uh-huh. after that. You guys, it's a lot yeah. of times it's just the basic stuff. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. But for fat loss cycle, things with bubbles in it, guys, bubbles, fizzy water. Oh my gosh. Um, last cut I was on for sure was really helpful. Bubbly is my favorite. You like LaCroix or what do you like again? What's the one you I get from Costco? Like LaCroix. Ice. Ice. You guys. That's it literally good. tastes like juice. Mm-hmm. My friend Jocelyn introduced that to me mm-hmm. and I was like, what the hell is this? This has zero calories. She's like, she's like, yeah. And I'm like, I have never had this before. It literally tastes like juice. Mm-hmm. And for like the first two weeks, Kevin and I got it. We like hardly drank any water because we're <laughs> living. Off I know, I know. We're like, okay, we need to cut back on the ice and drink more water. It but like it's so. <laughs> gotta cut back on the ice. It sounds like cocaine. Like, gotta cut back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, get some fizzy water. Get, get some ice if you're in a caloric deficit. Um, it helps so it does much. help, you guys. It just tastes good. It, it gives you kind of like that sugar taste in your mouth. It helps reduce full uh, reduce overall calorie intake. If you're getting mm-hmm. instead of choosing a soda, you're choosing a zero calorie option. Yeah, um, it's perfect for the end of the night too. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I brought up sweet. You know, people with sweet tooth. I have a massive sweet tooth. I always like to eat something sweet at the end of the night, but usually my uh, caloric budget is limited when I'm on a diet. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the night, um, bubblies and uh, things like ice are great swaps for that. And then uh, no alcohol, you guys. (laughs) Just if you're, and again, in a caloric deficit, trying to be in a caloric deficit is going to make it really hard to do. Um, They're really just empty calories, essentially. It's providing, giving your body no essential nutrients. And it comes with the calories of the alcohol itself, which is seven calories for every one gram. Um, and your alcohol stimulates the of ghrelin, which Shante was talking about with sleep. That's enough. It's just the hunger hormone. Okay. So you yeah. don't sleep, you drink a bunch of alcohol, leptin and ghrelin are like, woohoo. And guess what happens? You're hungry and you're not, you're, you're not satisfied. Um, and, and it impacts your sleep. It impacts your sleep. Yes. So just, just don't do it. Uh, I won't spend too much time. Yeah, just don't, just don't freaking drink alcohol, just don't guys. Do like, <laughs> just make your life a little bit easier. I'm telling and just don't you, do it. your body it comp make, will change so much when you yeah. stop drinking alcohol. <laughs> yeah, it's unnecessary. It's a toxin to the body. I mean, whether you want to, mm-hmm. you know, you know, acknowledge it or not, it is a toxin to the body, and your body does not like it. It wants to get rid of it. And so, um, when you are drinking alcohol and perhaps eating other foods, your body is going to work overtime to try to deplete the toxins first before it gets to your essential nutrients. So it's really important, especially during a deficit when you have goals to just not drink it, Uh, you know, just make your life a little bit easier. And this could be a fantastic opportunity for you to improve perhaps some social skills Mm -hmm. if you struggle with social anxiety you know, that was a huge factor for me when I first started, you know, I stopped drinking and even now I still get a little bit of social anxiety. Um, but I have obviously practiced a lot of my social skills sober. And so I'm confident in it now, but in the beginning, of course it was, you know, challenging and awkward and I felt weird. I felt weird being the only one not drinking. And, um, you know, so if you, if you do struggle with that, acknowledge that and have that as a goal personally for you. Mm -hmm. And last one I was going to add is like some diet sodas, right? Now, again, I think people get all crazy about the health consequences of like artificial sweeteners, but this is what cracks me up too. People are like artificial sweeteners, like, oh my God, diet sodas, but like carry around their phone and sleep with their phone under their head. (laughs) You know what I mean? It's just like, okay, guys, pick your poison here. Like it's like no artificial sweeteners, but I know that phone is glued to you at all times emitting that Wi-Fi. So like, and it's in like the same category of carcinogens. And so anyways, just don't be consuming 20 diet Cokes a day, right? Just it may... You, one the poison's a day. in the dose. The poison is in the dose. I'm not going to spend too long there. There are, there are studies out there. Go look at them. Do your own research. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. I know we're kind of also really tight on time. Holy moly. Yeah. Shoot. Okay. 
So number five, behaviors around tracking food intake. This is super important. And I'm going to tell you why. So um, here's something that I always say. Don't track what you eat. Eat what you track. What does that mean? So what I usually see people do is that they are tracking food as they go about the day. This poises a lot of issues. Number one, uh, if you are really busy, like most people are, uh, and you get stuck in a situation where you're, you know, multitasking, you have your, you know, in and out of meetings, uh, the chances of you pausing and actually tracking your food intake in that moment is highly unlikely. And so you might tell yourself in that moment, yeah, I'm just going to do it later at the end of the day, the end of the day comes and you're exhausted and you forget, or you don't want to do it. And then you end up not tracking it. And so maybe you made up in your mind, like, well, I think I kind of, you know, hit around the range that I'm supposed to, or, oh man, I don't, what did I eat today? I don't really remember. And so let's avoid that. (laughs) Let's avoid running into those issues. Another problem that I see too is, um, you're left with like 50 grams of protein at the end of the night. Uh, because you're tracking as you go about the day, you're not hitting your protein intake. Um, maybe you try or you think you're eating enough protein and then, oops, I'm short 30 to 50 grams. What am I supposed to eat besides a big ass bowl of chicken, <laughs> which is not <laughs> fun. <laughs> which is just, yeah, that's not fun. I've been there a couple times myself and it's just not sustainable, right? Uh, and so my recommendation for you is to spend some time the evening before and plan your meals for the entire day the next day. Uh, This is going to guarantee that you hit your macronutrients or at least your protein intake consistently every single day because you're already going to go into the day knowing exactly what you're going to eat, exactly how much your food is prepared, and you don't have to worry about anything. And this is especially... Uh, great for folks who are extremely busy and out and about and always on the go. Um, One thing that I noticed Kevin recently too, is he's, he's because, you know, he's on paternity leave right now. uh, He has been tracking, you know, as he goes and, you know, inputting his food as he's weighing and measuring in that moment. Mm. But I'm noticing he's like extra time on his phone. I'm like, you get, you can't do that. <laughs> like, more time on your phone. Like that's the last thing that you need. Mm-hmm. Um, like I, so I told him like, why don't you just spend a couple, you know, like 10 to 15 minutes the night before planning for the next day. That way you can have more time to spend with the baby and yeah. not be spending 20 minutes pl- like inputting your food. Uh, and so, yeah, it just saves you more time in the long run. So there's a couple options that you could do here. Um, you can meal prep in large portions and then portion out your macros for each meal for multiple work days. That way you have your, um, meals prepped, measured, weighed, ready to go. That way, you know, after you get ready in the morning, you're running out the door, you grab your meal and you could just go and everything's tracked, everything's prepped, everything's measured. This strategy takes more time up front, right? Uh, but it takes less time throughout the week. This is something that I used to do when I worked at my corporate job. And man, did my weeks go by so smooth um, because I didn't have to think about it. You know, I everything was prepped and planned and in my fridge and I just grabbed and go and ran out the door to sit two hours of traffic. Those were the days. Um, So, and then option number two is, again, you could prep in large portions and then portion out your meals for that one day before you leave for work. So this strategy takes less time up front, but it'll take you more time throughout the week. So it's really up to you on how you go about that. But those are just some strategies that um, I've recommended in the past and I've done myself as well. Yep. And so again, how it makes it suck less is you are now planning ahead. You're making sure you're getting adequate (laughs) protein and fiber and you're planning Mm -hmm. in treats and sweets. So you're still staying in your calorie deficit um, and incorporating things you love. So I just wanted to kind of pull that back to why this makes dieting suck less. Yes. Yes. If you want to make your life easier, you need to put in more effort in the planning part of it. Mm -hmm. And I know it feels like a lot in the beginning, but your life is going to go by so much smoother. It's going to be less stressful and you're going to reach your goals more consistently. 
Um, one last tip I have for you is, um, with regards to your protein intake, um, instead of trying to shoot for a large number, like a total protein goal, let's just say your protein intake goal is 150 grams per day. Instead of trying to eat random things, trying to meet that, try dividing that goal, that 150 grams by how many meals you prefer to eat during that day. So if you prefer to eat five meals per day, your protein goal per meal is going to be 30 grams. That's a much more achievable and manageable number to focus on rather than the entire 150 grams. Um, and so all, let's just say like you have breakfast, lunch, dinner, and then two snacks you just have in mind. Okay. I, my goal for each of these meals is 30 grams. How am I going to do that? Uh, again, if you prefer to eat four meals, it's going to be 37.5 grams per meal for somebody that has 150 gram, uh, protein goal. So that is one of my strategies and tips. Also, when it comes to protein, another thing that you could do is front load your protein in the morning, which is actually going to be the most beneficial to your, um, you know, managing your um, uh, blood sugars, uh, managing your cravings, energy, all of that stuff. <laughs> Um, and so if you want to shoot for maybe higher protein intake goal in the morning, maybe 50 to 60 grams, then you'll have a smaller protein goal for your rest of meals throughout the day, which can make it a little bit more manageable. Yes. And last tip six or seven, <laughs> um, is eat meals and stop snacking all day. Do you remember back when we were doing bodybuilding? They're like, eat six, seven small meals a day. And like, you were never you were always hungry and never really full because you were eating these little tiny ass meals. I don't know if your coach had you doing this, but my meals were so yeah. small. I was never actually full because like it was like yeah. little snacks all day. And I think there was also that m m rumor going around or that misnomer that um, smaller meals make your metabolism on fire. Like, Oh yeah. Oh my God. That? Like, Oh, small meals, like lights up your metabolism hey guys. <laughs> Then it's just annoying. Then you're eating every, like who has time to eat every hour, every two hours. I think I was eating every two hours. Oh my gosh. <sighs> just a lot. It's like a full-time job. It's a full-time job. No one wants to be packing six meals into little containers. So oh God, I remember those, I don't know if you had one, but I had one of those large meal prep <laughs> like bags, like duffel bags. Something like I thought that. I was so, I thought oh, it was so cool. Yes, I was like in the bodybuilding like, world. Yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, bringing six meals to work with me today. <laughs> it's noon. I got to eat my meal. You're at the gym, yeah. just like eating your lunch, like out of a tiny ass container. Yeah, you guys just <laughs> like not, not. Okay. Eat every four to six hours. My favorite meal number is four. Do you, you eat five, right? I eat about five. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes six. Okay. But they're pretty large. So I, I eat a lot. I eat frequently. I probably actually eat about two to three hours, uh, at a time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I personally don't like to feel the sensation of hunger. It, it doesn't sit well with me. So <laughs> I, <laughs> again, you guys, you won't die if you're a little hungry, but yeah, yeah it is a hungry <laughs> <hard> feeling. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's so funny because when I'm dieting, I, I just have like a different mindset when I'm in that space. So I know, <laughs> I know it's good. But when I'm like without food or I experience a, like a, a, a drop in my blood sugars and I'm like starting to feel really hungry in my stomach, I kind of like panic a little bit. I'm like, I need food right now. Kevin makes fun of me. He's like, <laughs> you know, Kevin makes fun of me. He's like, what's going to happen when something bad, like a tragedy happens and we don't have access to food. I'm like, well, I'm not in that situation today, so I need food <laughs> right now. Like, I don't know what's going to happen. Oh my gosh. You're so funny. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I think, and then I want to talk, uh, there's another tip mindset here. And it's so interesting how you say that when you're in a fat loss phase, you just know that that's going to happen. Uh, yeah. that you're going to feel a little hungry and it's normal. And you guys, I think mindset is a really big factor that we probably should have had its own number here. But if you mm -hmm. think you're going to be hungry and you obsess about the food, you're probably going to be hungry and you're probably going to obsess about the food. Yes. Once you get to a very, once you're pushing like low body fat numbers, that's a little bit of a different story, right? We're talking like bikini bodybuilder getting on stage, uh, lean, but for the average person that just wants to lose a little bit of weight, you're going to feel a little hungry, but guess what? 
the, that will go away within a few minutes if you distract yourself. Like I promise you, drink some water, distract yourself. Um, not to say that you and then can't follow listen. all the tips. <laughs> and then follow all the tips that we've talked right. to you about today, right? Yes. To make it a little bit easier. Absolutely. So my last photo shoot, my last bikini, I know we're kind of pushing time here, but my last bikini photo shoot, I really leaned into that and I was not hungry at all. And I got pretty late. Um, but so I yeah. wanted to just quickly touch on this and I know because we're pushing an hour. Um, again, like Shanti was saying, planning your meals, stop snacking all day. If you're eating mindlessly, you're going to probably uh, eat over your calorie allowance. Um, if you're in a deficit, uh, schedule your meals. I think this is really important that most people don't do. Again, plan ahead, schedule your meals, eat every four hours or so, um, and then slow the F down when you're eating, okay? If you're scra like <laughs> scarfing your food down, it's not going to really allow your brain to register that you're satisfied um, and you're going to feel really hungry. So slow down, chew, chew your food, really and look at your food and enjoy when you're plating it and putting it together because satisfaction also is with your eyes. Um, so yeah, limit stacking, plan your meals. Um, it's okay to eat bigger meals more often. Um, so yeah, we'll just end it there. Cause I know we're at an hour. <laughs> yeah. Anything else? Well, you I hope that add? was helpful. <laughs> no, but I do want to clarify something. So, uh, <laughs> what I said about, I don't like feeling hungry. It's usually with like, like, because I'm so consistent with eating about two to three hours a day, when I'm in a caloric deficit, I'm still on that eating schedule. So overall I'm experiencing hunger throughout the day versus when, I don't know, I forget to pack a snack or something and I'm out and about and it's been like three or four hours and I'm starting to feel hungry and I don't know when I'm going to have food again. Then I start to kind of panic oh. a little bit. Then it's like, oh shit. Like, uh oh, like what's going to happen? <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to like clarify yeah, okay, that. Clarify. I, was, I was thinking about that and I'm like, I should probably clarify that before you get off because then I'm going to perseverate over yeah. it and wish that I talked about it on the podcast. Dude, there is, hangry is a thing. Yeah, I yeah, hundred percent. And you do not want to see me hangry. No, okay? me either. All right. Okay. Thank you guys so much for listening. And um, also, we didn't have time today. We usually do a Q and A at the end. Um, if you have any questions about fat loss, building muscle, nutrition, fitness, or any personal questions at all, there is a link in the show notes that you can click to ask us a question and we will answer it live on the podcast. So yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye.